with partisan political opinion. The sharing of biased and false, false news has become, become all too common on social media. media. This is a textbook example of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. We work very hard to seek the truth and strive to be fair, balanced, and factual. Seen individually, the Sinclair editorials do not make much of an impact. But when Timothy Burke, a video editor in Tampa, Florida, collected 44 versions of that editorial from 44 local news markets and lay them side by side, allowing Americans to play them back word for word. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. The effect was chilling. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. Orwellian. It was actually fairly horrifying. About a minute and a half op-ed decrying um, um, biased platforms pushing out fake news that endangered our democracy. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. The anchors, for the most part, fairly stiff. Um, a couple of people have compared them to hostage videos. So for a few seconds, it's actually kind of funny. And then you sort of tune into what they're saying, and it becomes more and more horrifying. And whether the people understand exactly the politics and the conglomeration aspects that go into a message like this, these people, all they know is they saw a scary video where a bunch of news anchors were saying the same thing. Our greatest responsibility is to serve our Treasure Valley communities. And now their favorite news anchors are saying the same thing. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that ABC News 4 produces. And they're just like, you're one of them. When they learned that the Sinclair Broadcast Group was manipulating news content, the reaction of many Americans was, just what is Sinclair? Unlike Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC, Sinclair does not own a national news network, so its brand was not that well known. But it does own 173 local TV stations covering 40% of American households. Since those channels are affiliated with national broadcasting brands, ABC, NBC, and CBS, they display those logos rather than their parent companies. Up until now, Sinclair sent editorials from the company's headquarters in Maryland that their channels were required to broadcast. My goal with every segment is to tell you facts which you may not already know. Typically, the so-called must-runs are fronted by a Sinclair executive, Boris Epstein. He worked on Donald Trump's election team. Some critics would have you believe that my experience somehow disqualifies me from providing you with my analysis and commentary. This time, the company changed the formula and got its local anchors to deliver the message instead. It was caught and found itself in an unfamiliar position, in the spotlight. If you wanted to come up with the perfect strategy for how to manipulate or warp the dialogue in America, you wouldn't buy one big cable channel or one big broadcast channel. No, if you were savvy about this, you would buy local affiliates in markets across the country. Get into every major city, every region to communicate a message. And then if you can put that message in the mouths of hundreds of local anchors who have been on air, in some cases for many, many years, uh, that's a much better strategy for warping the discourse. There's also something else worth mentioning. Um, for all the attention CNN, MSNBC, Fox get, in fact, most Americans actually get their news if they're watching television from local news, not from the national networks, um, be they cable or broadcast. The anchors, they are very well known in their communities. They tend to be active in charities. They show up for special events. We are having an incredible night tonight. We are crushing cancer. But they're also the people talking about things that you might have seen on your street. You might have seen, you know, the next town over. They're giving you the weather from your community. The question now is, what do neighbors do about it? And you've come to trust them over time. This is a, a reality of local news. It's how it works. There's something particularly treacherous about taking these words from Sinclair's corporate headquarters and putting them in the mouths of journalists who are trusted to the point that now audiences can't tell whether or not the information they're consuming actually comes from these local journalists or if there's a giant conservative corporate Goliath pulling the strings. And the Goliath wants to grow. Sinclair has a $3.9 billion merger deal in place with Tribune Media, 
which would land Sinclair another 42 local TV stations, including in major markets like New York, Chicago, and Washington, boosting its reach from 40% of American homes to more than 70%. The merger requires the approval of the FCC, the U.S. broadcast regulator. And given the FCC's recent track record, since Donald Trump put Chairman Ajit Pai in the job last year, the regulator is not likely to stand in the company's way. Ajit Pai was appointed as chair of the FCC by the Trump administration, and in less than a year he has absolutely gutted the remaining media ownership rules that the FCC had in place. And he has made it more possible for large broadcasters like Sinclair to buy up almost every media outlet in your community. All of that has been done specifically to grease the wheels for this merger between Sinclair and Tribune, which before Chairman Pai's chairmanship would have been absolutely impossible to approve because it violated so many of these FCC rules. When the FCC was developed back in the 30s, the core concept was diverse ownership. You wanted a lot of different owners in a lot of different places. There was a vision of that that goes back a very, very long way. This assaults that vision. It basically says, no, you have one little group of people sitting in an office someplace and they decide what's being discussed all across the country. Having been drawn out of the shadows, its heavy-handed editorial methods exposed and ridiculed, Sinclair has come out swinging. It responded to questions put to it by New York Magazine by saying that print media is so left-wing as to be meaningless, that it has no credibility. However, actions and broadcast output speak much louder than words. And when Sinclair put out another editorial this past week, it reverted to its old formula. As you see, my segments are very clearly marked as commentary. The same cannot be said for cable and broadcast news hosts who inject their opinions and bias into news coverage all the time. One talking head, at head office, delivering the corporate message, rather than relying on Sinclair's local anchors and what remains of their credibility. That's one of the things I think that Sinclair is going to have to deal with. So many people have been exposed to this video that they have to be able to explain to that audience why their local news is still trustworthy. Are they going to attempt to repair what has been a massive damage to their image? Are they going to pull back from interfering in their newsrooms on a daily basis? I don't know. What's happened with Sinclair is actually really good. It's great that we have seen this thing happen with all the anchors reading the same lines across the country because we've had a real life example of what we should be afraid of.